Hello everyone and welcome to another video of the Sky channel. Now after the top 5 priorities video, I got a bunch of messages from people asking me to make a video focusing on battle and war strategies in Land and Lost Island. So that's exactly what this video is about. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to mention is something I have also mentioned in the top 5 priorities video because it is just so important and that is getting honor you need to get 40,000 honor as fast as possible just because of the fact that it gives you revival fungi at a much faster rate. So you can see the first jump comes at 20,000 and the next one is at 40,000. Both of these are major jumps and not only do you accumulate a lot more every hour, you can also accumulate a lot more in total. Now after 40,000, the jumps are much smaller. So first thing you need to do is get 20,000 honor and then 40,000 honor as a priority because the more revival fungi you have, the better you will do in wars. So that's the first thing and that's something I've mentioned before. It is very important for you to keep that in mind. Now the second thing is also something I've mentioned in the other video and that is to enhance your seasoned soldier ants as soon as possible. And the reason isn't just because they're stronger, which they are, by the way, enhanced season soldier ants, they get a much higher attack and defense. And of course, they got an additional critical rate as well, which is amazing. And I'm assuming this will be different for each of the classes, but essentially enhanced season soldier ants are much better than regular season soldier ants. But that's not the main thing. The main thing actually comes down here, and that is that they are actually much cheaper to heal in terms of revival fungi as opposed to regular season soldier ants. So not only are they better, they're cheaper to heal. Like look at this, 3,000 of these cost only 42,000 revival fungi to heal. And if you do the thing, same number of regular season soldier ants, that's 60,000. Multiply that by 1,000 and you can see a major difference. You are spending much less revival fungi on the enhanced season soldier ants. So you should essentially aim to pay less for more, right? You, you, you pay less to heal even stronger units. So focus on that. Now, another thing that I want to mention here, which I haven't mentioned in the priorities video, is that you are probably going to enhance enough for one unit or maybe two units max, right? You'll still have a lot of normal season soldier ants that you haven't enhanced, primarily because it just is pretty expensive to enhance them, right? You don't want to keep on enhancing all of them because the season will end and then they're going to disappear. So you'll have both enhanced season soldier ants and regular season soldier ants. And essentially, you should first only use the enhanced season soldier ants and then heal them and then use them again and then heal them until you run out of revival fungi. And at that point, you can switch to start using your non-enhanced season soldier ants until they are all out as well. But when you start getting your revival fungi back, you should not heal the non-enhanced season soldier ants. Only focus on healing the enhanced season soldier ants until you are almost maxed out in your fungi and you fear that if you don't heal them, you're going to overflow on your fungi. At that point, you should start healing your non-enhanced ones as well. So essentially keep your non-enhanced season soldier ants as backup or reserve soldiers that you use, but they are the last ones that you heal and only heal them if you are about to overflow on your fungi, which I did, by the way, as you can see, I'm overflowing now. So I did heal all of the non-enhanced ones that I had because we did have a bunch of battles not too long ago. So that's the second point that I wanted to focus on. The third thing is also very important. You are going to be using a lot of stamina in wars and you want to make sure that you are doing it as efficiently as possible. So what that means is that you should primarily only use your best ants in war and only use one unit at a time. A lot of people get a little impatient and they start using two units, three units, or maybe all four units, but that is not efficient in terms of stamina because you will run out of stamina really fast and you are going to be using that stamina in a very inefficient way, 
right? You're, you may have two units that are reasonably strong, no doubt about that. But one of them is likely going to be stronger than the other. So you should focus on using the stamina on the strongest possible unit each time. So what I do is a, is a very helpful trick that you should learn. There are four formations that you have, right? So my strongest unit is in the pro troop in my formation one. And in formation two, the strongest unit is in troop one. And as you can see, in, in the third formation, it's in troop two, and in the fourth formation, it's in troop three. And what that does is that allows me to quickly switch between the different units. And the reason is that if all of my units are full of stamina, I'm going to send the pro unit once, then I'll send this one once, and then I'll do it the same with all the other units, and then probably I'll do it one more time until all my uh, staminas are 90 out of 100, so I don't risk overflowing any of my stamina. Then I'll focus on the pro unit only until I run out of stamina, and then I'll switch to the second one and focus on this one until I run out of stamina, and then I'll do the same with the others until I'm out of stamina on the, you know, troop three, and I'll switch back to the pro because now Hopefully by now a bunch of time has passed and my pro unit has more stamina again. So I can use pro unit again. And how that's helpful is that it means I will last much longer in battles than most of the other people because of the way I'm efficiently using my stamina. Hopefully you can copy this too and hopefully this does help and you see uh, impact of this. So that's the point number three. So point number four is that march times are critical to win battles because essentially if you have low march times you can fill up the towers faster than the enemy can kick you out alternatively if you have high march times it's possible that the enemy can kick you out faster than you can fill up those towers so even though you may in general be stronger than the opponent if they have lower march times it's possible that the tower durability is reducing each time and then eventually the tower gets destroyed and that could be purely because of the fact that your march times are too high. That's why it's important to set the battlefield up in a way that's in your advantage. And how can you do that? You can create some towers around the battle tower, which give you some additional space, for example, or you could occupy the residence or wonder of the area so that you can teleport all over the place and you can have lower march times and you know people closer so that they can fill up the tower faster. So march times are critical in barren land. So make sure you set up the battlefield in a way that you can be the one in the advantage. All right. So the fifth thing I want to talk about is something that a lot of people have been very confused about. And that is essentially in the soldier reform. There are these buffs that you can assign that have like, you know, increased attack against seasoned soldier troops that are stationed or, you know, increased health against seasoned soldier troops that are stationed. Now, a lot of people think that this is valid even in towers that you are attacking. But I did see a bunch of messages from mods who say that this is not the case. So stationed seasoned troops are non-player characters. Essentially, the defenders of, let's say, structures are stationed seasoned troops. For example, if you go into, let's say, our wonder and you go into info, you'll see that they're stationed seasoned troops here. These are non-player characters. Unfortunately, this buff does not apply to towers. So if you are attacking a tower where an enemy is uh, garrisoned in, these buffs don't take effect. So keep that in mind when you are assigning these reforms. So the sixth thing I'm going to talk about is the fairy trick. And that is essentially a very helpful war tactic that, uh, that I learned a long time ago. And how that works is that let's assume you are on this side and the enemy is on the other side, right? And assume they have occupied both of these ferries and they're attacking one of your towers. So what you can do is that instead of defending that tower for now, you can focus on attacking their ferry. So 
set up a bunch of rallies and attack this fairy. And notice fairies have a very low durability, so it's very easy to get them. And you can get them as fast as, you know, five to 10 minutes if you have enough rally set up. Now, the other thing to note is that, so when you are setting up the rallies, for the fairies, the march time is going to be determined by the person who creates the rally, who is likely going to be particularly close to the fairy, so it's not going to be extremely long. And all the other people who are joining the rally, they'll have also a shorter march time, just because the march time is determined by the rally creator. So it is much faster for you to rally and attack a fairy as opposed to the enemy who is probably going to be defending the ferry sure the two people who might be over here they'll have very short march times but everyone else is going to be fairly far and for them to actually send support to the ferry it's going to take them a very long time as opposed to you who is sending four rallies from that unit that's very close by uh, the enemy can only send two units to garrison so it's fairly easy for you to take a ferry, even if you are facing somebody much stronger. So what that does is that you occupy the ferry and then you get a 30 minute shield. So now what you could do is if you were, let's say, facing a two versus one, you can start fighting the other opponent while this opponent can basically do nothing because there's a shield on. And after about, let's say, 20 minutes, you can come back here and start attacking the other ferry, the ferry on the other side. And hopefully you'll be able to take it before the enemy can, you know, retaliate or the shield comes off. And even if the shield comes off, you, you are probably still going to have a head start on them. So you'll be able to attack this and get it. And then you get another 30 minute shield. So basically, you can lock the enemy out for like a whole hour and then they have to take the fairies back and they're probably going to take them both back and then start attacking your tower. And then you just need to keep them at bay for about 30 minutes or something. And you can redo this and you can just make them waste a lot of time without being able to make any progress onto you. So that's a very important trick and that can be extremely helpful for you if you are fighting opponents that are much stronger than you. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is relatively newer. So the developers recently released a new update where you can actually start discarding tunnels. And that is extremely helpful for this next tactic that I'm going to teach you. And how that works is that let's assume we're over here and the enemy is connected to us and they are taking this tunnel from us. What the what the leader of our alliance can do, or essentially what I can do, is that I can just discard the tunnel and that starts a 15 minutes timer. And after 15 minutes, this tunnel becomes neutral. And how that's helpful is that now our alliance, which was defending the tunnel, can actually start attacking the tunnel which is obviously going to have a lower durability because the enemy has been attacking this as well. So let's assume the enemy brought it down to like 5% durability and now it's a neutral tunnel, which means that our, our team can start attacking it as well. And if we get the last hit, well, the tunnel gets back to us again. But not just that, the tunnel actually gets back to us at 100% durability and a 30 minute shield. So now the enemy can't do anything for an additional 30 minutes because, well, we are shielded from them. And when they do, they'll have to start attacking a brand new 100% durability tunnel and potentially waste a lot of their stamina in the process. So that's a very neat trick that you can now start using. And it can actually keep opponents at bay, even if they are much stronger than you. All right, so that covers the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comments and definitely like the video as well and subscribe to our channel. And if you haven't, please check out some of our other videos. We have a lot of amazing content for you on our channel and we'll continue creating more. If you have any ideas on some great videos, please let us know and we can start working on them soon. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.